Hey guys, how's it going? Lagbro here. So this is the last part of my twinked leveling guides and we're doing caster this time. And leveling a caster is a bit different than leveling a melee or a ranger because we don't actually need a six link for this. I used a six link and uh, like twinked items but you can actually do this almost as fast without twinked items and six links. The thing that makes the most difference is basically the movement speed boots. And that you also make sure you have four links with the right color sockets for your skilled gems to use. What you can see in the background is the first run of Chamber of Innocence. And then I'm gonna show you the guide and I'm gonna end with a map showcase. I just wanna note that I am not a speedrunner, so these times can be improved a lot if you are really good at layouts. But I wanna show that normal people can also do good times on a twinked character. And I also wanna note that the map showcase in the end is of a map with elemental equilibrium, which uh, effectively halves our damage. Let's get starting with the guide. Our starting items are going to be Life Sprig, two of them. Uh, we're going to be using Wanderlust or Seven League Steps. We're going to be using Gold Rim, Fossil Crafted Gloves with Metallic and Frigid Fossils, Darkness Enthroned, socketed with two uh, Life Jewels for some for some defense. And we're also using two Duadri's Damning Rings. Those give you five mana after each kill. So that's going to sustain our mana until like forever. The body armor, we're going to be using uh, Thousand Ribbons. And that is because we can use a four linked thousand ribbons. That's super cheap. So that's probably one chaos orb. And that gives us a super cheap five link because thousand ribbons have uh, socketed gems are supported by level five uh, elemental proliferation. The color you want on your links in your armor is three blues and one green. You also need another four link with three blues and one green. And other than that, you're going to need two more greens and three more blues. Our starting gems are freezing pulse linked with onslaught and a Stormblast Mine linked with Lesser Poison. Stormblast Mine is going to be your main single target damage, so make sure you pre-stack 15 stacks of Stormblast Mines and a Orb of Storms before you pop the boss or before the boss spawns, and then you detonate all your mines. This is going to give you huge burst damage and almost one-shot a lot of the bosses in the beginning. Orb of Storms also procs every time you throw a Stormblast Mine, so it's also going to give you a lot of sustained damage. On level 4 you link Frost Blink with your Arcane Surge and you add Orb of Storms to your main, main link. You also add a Quicksilver of Adrenaline on level 4. On level 5 you equip Kuri Ward anointed with Fleet Foot. Fleet Foot gives you 5% increased movement speed, 10% attack and cast speed if you used the movement skill recently and the most important one, 20% increased cooldown recovery speed of movement skills. This will make your cooldown for Flame Dash and Smoke Mine a lot shorter when we start using them. On level 8, you add Added Lightning both to your Stormblast Mine and to your Orb of Storms setup. You also add Added Cold to your Orb of Storms and you start using a Y Soak. On level 10, you start using Smoke Mine and Flame Dash. You have probably seen this interaction before, but to explain it a bit more, you throw the Smoke Mine, you detonate the Smoke Mine when the mine lands, and then you Flame Dash instantly as you teleport with the Smoke Mine. This gives you a super long teleport and it also gives you increased uh, movement speed from the smoke mine. Uh, we also start using Axiom Perpetuum, one in each hand. And if you want you can use Precision as well because the Axiom gives you a lot of crit chance. So we're, we actually have quite a decent crit in the beginning. On level 16 we start using Herald of Thunder, Herald of Ice and Wave of Conviction linked with Added Lightning. We need added lightning in the setup to always proc lightning exposure on the monsters, which give them minus 25% lightning resistance. At this level is also where I start looking for wands with plus one to lightning spell skill gems and some flat added lightning damage to spells on one of them and flat added cold damage to spells on one of them. On level 18, you add faster casting to your Orb of Storms setup. You can also add control destruction if you need some more damage or if you want some more damage with your Orb of Storms, but you don't need it to clear other mobs. You're also adding trap and mine damage and Ellie Focus on your Stormblast mine. On level 20, we use two Barracks Grip Rings. And on level 22, we are looking for new Abyss Jewels for our belt with added cold damage to spells and added lightning damage to spells and life if you can find it but those can be expensive. On level 24 we start using conductivity curse on every boss for some increased lightning damage and on level 28 we're gonna start using lightning spire trap instead of storm blast mine. So that link will be lightning spire trap, Ellie focus, concentrated effect and trap and mine damage. Next we're going to add innervate on level 31 to your orb of storms setup. 
This will increase your lightning damage for other skills as well, like Wave of Conviction and Lightning Spire Trap. So it's a really good addition if you think you're lacking a bit of both uh, clear and single target damage. On level 38, we will be swapping Onslaught support for Shane support in our Orb of Storm setup. This is the gem setups we will be running until maps. So, for our skill tree, we're trying to pick up as much spell damage, lightning damage, minion damage, and life as we can in the tree. So we're starting off by spell damage into lightning walker over here, and we're grabbing these nodes as fast as possible. The, the increased cooldown recovery speed for movement skills, back up with our um, fleet foot that we have anointed on the amulet, which gives you super fast recovery of both um, smoke mine and flame dash. Makes you zooming through through the areas. Then we're picking up elemental overload. We're going down here for more damage, spell damage, life. Picking up these two for damage, some resistance. We're also picking up precision, and that is for for the dexterity and also cast speed. It's going to be good for us. After that, we're grabbing more life here. Going down, we are grabbing spiritual aid. So minion damage affects us. Grabbing some more minion damage nodes. Grabbing this, elemental damage, elemental penetration, grabbing a jewel socket. So on level 22, you can put your put your um, other life jewel. Since you switched to um, the lightning damage to spells and cold damage to spells, you can put your one of your life jewels here. Then we're grabbing more life here. <clears throat> After that, grabbing minion damage. Up, grabbing more life. Another jewel socket. Grabbing more life there. Grabbing a jewel socket there. More life. And at this point, we're usually like Act 10 or in maps, depending on how fast we go. After that, we're going for some more damage if we want to. At this point, you can start like picking up nodes that are just generic for your tree or your, your end game tree. So if they were going spell crit instead, you can go over here and grab um, like Heartseeker, uh, go over here, grab the life and grab Doomcast that way. So you get more crit multi. And then go down, uh, grab the life and, and crit there. Uh, we're not doing crit here since we're using control and destruction, but that's an option instead of going these lightning nodes. Uh, for our ascendancy, we are going. Uh, I went for um, pendulum of destruction. It doesn't make a huge difference. I mean, it's seventy five percent, seventy five percent elemental damage sometimes but I mean it doesn't make a difference you can go either either ascendancy you want I'm leveling with this tree as a and planning on going necromancer next so it doesn't really matter that much okay that's that's what we're doing for the tree that concludes the full guide now I'm gonna leave you with my first blood aqueducts run and also my first map if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or come drop by my Twitch stream Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays at 10pm CET. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone for watching and if you like the content, please like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.